All right, we begin this yoga class from March 2013. Here's Linda Leesman doing Abhaya Mudra. Come back. Abhaya Mudra, the fear not position, while she's doing the first stage of Siddhasana. It's very meditative, doesn't she? All right, this is Bhattakanasan hanging from the sling. There's something about supporting yourself from the shoulder blades that helps you really elongate the spine as you drop down from above. And then you realize that by having the weight of the spine lifted up off the pelvis, you can release the thighs to the outside quite a bit. Then we move from Bhattakanasan always the groin opening. Here's another view of it. You can see here Ruki in the yellow has the toes curled against the wall. So it really helps you to get in close with your pelvic floor moving closer and closer to the heels. All right, now we have Patty doing Suptapada 1 using a belt around the foot and resisting the other leg into the wall. Uh, even though you can see the back of her left leg is not grounded, all that space. But nonetheless, a lot of people don't realize that just having the leg out and pressing down, you lose some power. As soon as you have the wall to push against, all of a sudden you realize how much more dynamic the pose is. And of course, what the leg on the floor is doing is really important to releasing the leg that's raised up. Mr. Engel calls the raised leg the mobile intelligence and the leg that's on the floor the stable intelligence. So as we go on in the variations here, the next one is using this double belt. This is Nadine Lolino. God bless you, out in Earthship in uh, New Mexico now. But here you have the one belt loop from the raised leg hip to the extended leg foot to help really pull that hip socket. Um, and she's making the internal rotation with the belt loop there. But on the raised leg, you can see the belt loop is going from by the armpit shoulder blade to the raised foot. So it gives you two different planes to resist. And it feels really good if you've never done that variation. Then we move into Suptapada 2 with two different variations here out to the side. Once again, leg extended into the wall. But this time we have the belt from the chest to the extended leg out to the side. And one of the variations there is not only give you something to resist the inner leg of that lateral leg moving to the side, but it also helps you resist the chest back into the belt loop. So instead of letting that part of your trunk get uh, moved in the direction that the leg is, is rotating laterally here, then you can resist your trunk back and maintain more of a Tadasana action. And then we move on to the next variation, which is the same thing, but it adds the extra belt from the hip socket to the foot as we did in Suptapada 1. Then we come into this abdominal crunch and by doing this particular variation first you see how high up your eyes are and then you know in Arda Navasana you don't take the feet higher than the eyes and that's where the next variation is here. So there it is and if you're weak we put the feet against the wall to give you something to resist against. Then we open up with Adamukha Shvanasana, and then the variation is Ekapada, bending the leg into your chest. There you go, Donatella. And then taking the foot up the wall and extending. There's Patty again. And that really helps lengthen the inner groin. And then you drop the heels to the floor and really challenge the back of the leg and calf. All right, then we move to triangle pose. Sorry, we lost it. Uh, then we move to triangle pose, and then we have the belt, right, helping to rotate that thigh. You can see the way right there at the hip socket buttock, it's pulling it externally, and that really gives the movement to the hip socket in the correct way. And then we see if having the partner do it, do you understand how to do the action by yourself? So the prop always helps you to understand the correct movement. Now here's the same thing, bending into partial kanasan. And uh, here we're dropping the thigh down. We have the belt externally rotating both legs. And then you can roll the back leg externally as well. And then you move deeper into the pose. You drop all the way down. Here's Megan, you can see, whoops, how she shortened her, her side body. All right, now here's Arda Uttanasana. Always come back to a symmetrical position after every couple of asymmetrical poses. 
and uh, stabilize the body that way. Then you move into partial knotten, really nice variation when your foot is up on the block. And you can really extend the back leg very, very long. And now this is an interesting variation. The arms are up the wall like you're doing dog pose. And a lot of times the back leg doesn't really understand how to get the full extension. So, oops, the, so the next thing you do is you go to the next variation, which is you drop your hands five inches down the wall. And then all of a sudden that extra pushing power into the back leg makes you realize, oh, I can stretch my leg that much? And then you can go back up the wall and finish the pose. Then you move into a twisting pose, Maricha 3. You bring the leg deep, deep into you. Oh, there's Wendy Clinard from Flamenco fame in the background. And then you twist into the wall and you hook your elbow to the outside and you brace that against the wall because you're a really nice rotation to challenge. And then here's Kathy Welfare, my longtime apprentice, grounding the head of my shin by putting the big toe and index toe on it and grounding it down. You really feel that stretch and this enables me to get a really nice extension on the raised leg doing Ekapada Setu Bandhasan. But in this position, I'm only doing the top foot. And then what I do is I, I rotate that leg down to the floor. Uh, and then you see, you do the leg that's on the floor with the belt and you pull on that and then you extend the raised leg up against that. Gives you another real great feeling. And then comes Shavasana, the end of the class. Wow, it felt really good. Hope you enjoyed that.